But the tribe of Dan, who's gonna come from the tribe of Dan? The Antichrist. When we go back to the book of Revelation chapter 7, and we saw in chapter 7, there was 144,000 being, being sealed for God. Those 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of the Israelite nation. 12,000 people. The Israelite nation. There are two who work through this human being. One being Christ, the king, and the other one, Satan. Two of them, both of them, I should say, both of them work through every single Christian soul. When we go to the Old Testament, where the Lord God came and spoke to Moses, and he said, you build me that tabernacle, that big tent, you build me that tabernacle, and then the Lord God said to Moses, I want two people to work in this tabernacle of mine. One from the tribe of Judah, and the other one from the tribe of Dan. Now these are sons of Jacob, who was called later Israel. So he said, I want two people working in my tabernacle. One from the tribe of Judah, and the other one from the tribe of Dan. Now, who came from the tribe of Judah? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy and mighty name. He is from the tribe of Judah, the lion. But the tribe of Dan, who's going to come from the tribe of Dan? The Antichrist. When we go back to the book of Revelation chapter 7, and we saw in chapter 7, there was 144,000 being, being sealed for God. Those 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of the Israelite nation. 12,000 people from each tribe of the Israelite nation. 12 tribes times 12,000, 144,000. These 144,000 were sealed for God. When you read in Revelation 7, the 12 tribes, the name of Dan is not mentioned in those 12 tribes. Yet he is one of the sons of Jacob, Israel. But he is not mentioned in, the, in chapter 7 being sealed for God. Why? Because whoever goes against the Lord Jesus Christ, their name will not be written in the book of life. They will not be mentioned. They will be gone for good forever. That's why Dan is not mentioned in Revelation 7 because those tribes were being sealed, stamp sealed, meaning authenticated, approved, accepted by God. And God will never accept someone who is an anti-Christ, against Christ. God the Father has only one son. He only recognizes Jesus out of the entire human race, by the way. So don't ever think God approves of anyone outside of Jesus Christ. Now, this is not discrimination. This is not being, you know, judgmental. This is the truth. You bring me one human being that lived anywhere near Jesus Christ of Nazareth lived. Impossible. You bring me, whoever you want to bring. Come on, let's go. I am ready. Show me a life of a religious figure of a philosophical figure, over a political figure, anyone, you bring me anyone, no one ever lived like Jesus. The holiness, the purity, the perfection, the excellence, the glory of Jesus Christ, no one. And we've said this before, and I'll say it again. If anybody wants to compare the Lord Jesus with any other religious figure, or whichever that figure is. Let's say I'll go with you and let's compare. But I will tell you this, my dear friend. If you say your religious figure came with morals, 
with ethics, with values, with principles. Okay, no problem. The ultimate, your religious figure could have achieved in their life on earth was to change a bad person into a good person. With those teachings, with those morals, with those values, the ultimate they could have achieved was to change a bad person into a good person. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all glory to his holy name, he did not come to change a bad person into a good one. He came to change a dead person into a living one. In this, there is no comparison. Everyone falls short. Jesus stands alone, so unique, so highly exalted and elevated beyond every religious figure and every human being. He is the only one that said, if you believe in my word, even if you die, you will live. But if you take my body and drink my blood, you will live in me forever. Jesus promised life and eternal one too. No one ever dared to promise humanity eternal life except Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, in this alone should raise a humongous question mark to you, my dear friend. You need to find out more about Jesus Christ. Why is he so unique? Why is he so special? Why, why, why? Why? Twelve eyewitnesses and 70 others who witnessed the Lord, lived with him, walked with him, saw everything, heard everything, documented everything. Then they are not obligated to falsify things. In fact, they died for what they wrote. And they died for what they believed in. And never blinked their eyes twice. Even when the sword was placed on their necks, they never denied Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Isn't this also another question mark? Why would they do that? Are they so ignorant to die for someone who is a false prophet? Or a, or a holy man unless they died for the one who said I am that I am the true living God revealed in the flesh came to visit earth heaven embraced earth when Jesus was born so my beloved in the tabernacle at the time of Moses the prophet the Lord God said I want two people to work in my tabernacle one from the tribe of Judah, symbolically representing Christ, the king. And one from the tribe of Dan, symbolically representing Satan, the Antichrist. Now why? The Lord, through his infinite wisdom, allowed Satan to work through us as well. Reason being... Since we are so weak, we are created on the basis of love. And you've heard this before, and I'll say it again. Wherever there is true love, there has to be freedom. Because without freedom, you can never live this love, you can never taste this love, and you can never share this love. What allows you to live this love, to taste it, to share it, is freedom. So therefore, wherever there is true love, there has to be freedom. Freedom is indispensable. You cannot separate it from love. And since there is freedom, there has to be choices. Otherwise, how can you say you are free if you don't have more than one option? Imagine if God placed you in this path and there is no other path but this one. And then God came and said, you're free. I'm not. You placed me in a, in a path I didn't choose, you chose for me. Where is my freedom? And this is why God said to Adam, I'll give you options. There are trees over there you can eat from. There is the tree of life in the heart of the center, in the heart of the Garden of Eden, you can eat from. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat from it. He gave him options. Why? Because Adam was created on the basis of divine love. With love came freedom, with freedom choices. And with choices, it required something called the will the will is the tool for me and you to say yes and to say no including God I can say no to God and he will not interfere 
but he will indirectly but directly he won't until I allow him freely willingly based on love come God and do as you please he won't until we call him for this reason God allowed Satan to work through us you know why because you see God is good and God is love God doesn't hurt God doesn't kill so he uses Satan to break us he uses Satan to break us when we become in a simple terminology naughty he didn't laugh when we veer off the road God will allow Satan to come and smack us so there are two working in this tabernacle temple the temple is the body your body here so he will allow Satan to work in us every time we say no to the Lord Jesus he will call Satan and say smack them but I'll give you a limit a boundary not freely I have limited you because I know each of my children what they are capable of handling he will not give us something outside of our capacity but even when we go through hardships it is the grace of the Lord Jesus that is carrying us as well but Satan will work in us Christ will work and Satan will work every time we do something good remember it was the Lord the good God who did it in us and every time we do something bad remember it was Satan who is working through us because through Satan it is a disciplinary action for us to wake up it's a more simplistic approach when I'm healthy when I'm wealthy when I'm strong when I'm young no one can say anything to me and especially living in the West it's a free country brother what's up bro get down brother lay me some skin whoa what's up what, 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 what. so when I am healthy wealthy still young and it's a free country I can go wherever however with whomever no one can stop me mom and dad come and say son please don't go with these so-called friends be quiet mom and dad and if you talk more I'll dial triple zero they'll throw you in the cage and take you to Fairfield police station <laughs> hello to all the <laughs> coppers <laughs> and please don't book me when I'm speeding on the road okay that's a confession <laughs> All right, we try to be good, but if you book me, I'll book you. <laughs> I'll book you my way. I'll make a phone call. I'll make the phone call to the one who created you or created me, so you better not book me. All right, so parents say, don't do it. No, I'll do whatever I want. The, the priest, the father says, don't go, don't mix. No, we don't listen. We don't listen to, to no one. What happens the Lord allows Satan to come and get me into trouble uh, I was caught taking drugs the cop has caught me I was speeding and I was drunk and I had an accident and my friend got really hurt in that accident he almost lost his life what a big shake what a big quake happened in my life who allowed it the Lord why because I'm disobedient I'm not listening and if he lets me freely as I wish I will end up destroying my entire being God is love he purchased us with his own precious blood on Calvary on the cross he will not let you go until he calls you home so he will let Satan to come when I'm healthy I don't care about anything when I'm sick yeah. <laughs> I will not leave one saint alone without mentioning their name and begging them for their intercession and their prayers I'll go to every church I'll, ch I'll ask every priest I'll ask every father please pray for me I am sick 
I don't care about anything anymore. Before I used to gossip about everyone. I gave up that gossip. I'm all focused on this illness. All I care about is to be healed. And the moment the Lord heals me, did you know, did you know, did you know, did you know? Why can't we be good boys and good girls without going through hardships? The Lord is our father. And as the father, he will not let us do naughty things without a disciplinary action. And that disciplinary action, Satan is working also. Satan will come and break us. Christ, who is also working in us, will make us. Christ, light. Satan, darkness. Christ, holiness. Satan, filthiness. Christ, life. Satan, death. Christ, construction. Satan, destruction. But let me tell you this. Between the destruction and the construction, this is where you will meet your Messiah face to face. Wow. Between the destruction and the construction, this is where you get to know the Messiah. He reveals himself to you between being broken and being amended once again. When we hit rock bottom, it is then and then only we realize there is no one that can save me except God. You see, the Lord will make sure I come to this realization. The Lord will make sure I come to this truth. The Lord will make sure I come to this insight where He will make sure I no longer rely, trust on in, in people, but my reliance and trust must be first on God, then people that are given to me by God. But you see before, I relied on people, I didn't care about God. So what will God do? He will take them away one by one. You put, take this as an advice, okay? And don't try it, it's dangerous. You put anyone before the Lord, He will take that person from you. And He will make sure that the people that you thought they were the one and only for you, you will realize there is only one who is the one and only, and that is Christ the King. No one, no one can love you, can help you, no one can support you more than Jesus. No one. So, the Lord, He will bring that person into this corner. And He will corner that person for that person to live this reality. That number one, I am a nothing. Yet before I thought I was everything. I was something special. When he breaks me, when he corners me and squeezes me, I'll realize right there and then for the first time ever. You see, the Lord is the teacher. When he teaches, you will learn whether you like it or not. <laughs> Believe me, no one teaches like the Lord. But sometimes he teaches the hard way. So when I realize that I am number one and nothing, number two, everyone is useless and hopeless. No one can save me. No one can heal me. No one can take me out of this troublesome situation. I've realized all along it was God from day one. Yet I was total ignorant of that and didn't care much. When I come to this realization that only God can save me, then God will show up. When he shows up, he will heal. So between destruction and construction, there and there only, you will know, not believe, only you will know God exists. <laughs> so when this atheist, with all of my respect, when this atheist um, professor comes and gives a lecture at a university level, 
and says there is no God, I will laugh at such ignorant statement. I will laugh. Why? Because God revealed himself to me. Who do you think you are, piece of dust? You think you've got credentials? <laughs> Come, let's go together to a desert and live for one night in a cave. Let me see your credentials. Do you want to see what Satan looks like? You, Mr. Professor, acting like a fool, like a little kid, ignorant, ignorant, unbelievable. But you see, it takes God to make a human realize that he exists. It takes God. And this is why God allowed Satan to also work in the temple, which is you are the temple. Christ works and Satan works. You listen to Christ, you're in the light. You listen to Satan, you're in darkness. Satan will break you. When he breaks you, you'll start calling and crying out to the light. Come to my rescue. The Lord will come. Why? Because he's love. He purchased us all with his precious blood. He will come to our rescue and says, mm, you learned your lesson? Not yet? Okay, Satan, a little bit more, please. Uh, bend him over here, twist him over here, barbecue him over here. Okay, you're well done now. <laughs> a nice sausage sizzle. <laughs> Satan is very ugly. He tries. Oh yeah, he tries. If one thing you learn from Satan is patience. He is very patient. He will go along with you for years. Until he pulls the carpet from beneath your feet. Or the rug. He knows when to pull it. <laughs> he's very smart but compared to the Lord Jesus he's ignorant he's not smart at all uh, the Lord can play with him and he won't know what hit him so that's why you need the Lord you need the Lord Jesus not your wealth not your knowledge not your whatever rank you have whether it's in the church or outside the church none of that will help you you need the Lord Jesus it doesn't matter you are the Pope, you're the Patriarch, you're the Archbishop, you're a Bishop, who cares? If you don't have the Lord and you're the Pope, you're lost. If you don't have the Lord and you're an Archbishop or a Bishop, you're lost. Without the Lord, you are blind, I'm blind, all of us are blind. We need the Lord. It is the Lord who looks after the church. It is the Lord who protects the church. It is the Lord who shepherds the church. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me to green pastures and still waters. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's the Lord. Not the Pope, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. And this Lord is God. And this God is the only one who created everyone and everything. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is his signature, Nazareth. The one who came from Nazareth. The love of my life.